A lot of animated films came out in 2022. Some good, some bad, so I'm gonna do a tier list. Some of these technically came out in 2021, but I'm going to go over the US releases here. At least for the wider releases or releases that were on streaming in the US. This is mostly all animated films, though there are some hybrids in here, or films that focus on an animated character, like Sonic 2 or Rescue Rangers. And obviously I haven't seen every animated film in 2022, but these are the ones I've seen and it's a good chunk of them. Also, I already did this tier list on my Twitch channel, so you should go and follow that when I do more tier lists. I'm gonna go in release order, and we've got a lot to go over here, so let's get started. First is Hotel Transylvania Transfermania. This is really weird, it was supposed to come out in 2021, and no one was told about the delay in October when it was supposed to release, so people were waiting for it to release on release day. Also, a lot of the main cast isn't in this film. No Adam Sandler, no Kevin James, and also Gendy isn't involved, which is already a loss. It's just not as memorable as the others in this franchise. D tier. The House. This is an anthology movie of three stop-motion stories, all focusing on this house. I really recommend this to those who like animated horror. Even if you don't like one of the stories, you might like the other two. They're all in different styles. I personally like the story with the mouse the most. B tier. Riverdance and Animated Adventure. This originally came out in the UK in 2021, but got a Netflix release in 2022. One of the most hilarious reviews I've seen for this movie on Letterboxd is, sadly, River dances at a funeral. I was surprised to see Megaloceros in it. As a paleo nerd, as you can tell by my name, I was excited to see that they had that in it. It almost reminded me of the Irish Folklore Trilogy from Cartoon Saloon and Tom Moore, but that's probably only because it's Irish. C tier. Bell. This came out in January in the US. I love Mamoru Hosoda's films. Wolf Children and The Girl Who Leapt Through Time are two of my favorite anime films. This, however, has a lot of Summer Wars vibes. So if you love that movie, you're probably going to like this one too. And I love how it tackles the themes of being online, both with just being an online personality, but also how people perceive others online. It also has sort of a Beauty and the Beast thing going on throughout the film, which is very cool. It's an easy S tier for me. The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild. The absolute nerve of Disney releasing this the year after Blue Sky Studios was shuttered. It doesn't have the same animation quality as the previous Ice Age movies, because it wasn't made by Blue Sky. It was made by the same studio that did the animated Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies on Disney+. It mainly focuses on Buck, which I do like as a character, but there's also this really weird dinosaur villain that has this giant disgusting brain. It's mostly forgettable and really just something for Disney to put out to keep the Ice Age franchise alive for them. D tier. Turning Red. When I saw the trailer for this, I thought it was cute but didn't think much of it. But I actually ended up watching this movie multiple times throughout 2022. I related to the movie a lot since it takes place in 2002, where I was also 13 years old. Also, the scene with Mei drawing under her bed, that's something that I know a lot of creative types can relate to, where you draw things that you hope your parents don't find out about. Definitely a very good coming-of-age story. S tier. Pinocchio, A True Story. The first Pinocchio movie of 2022. It became a bit of a meme with the clips of the Polly Shore dub. I didn't watch it when Saberspark did his video on the movie, but I finally watched it recently and I gotta say, I'm kinda disappointed. I thought it would be a lot worse. Not to say that it isn't bad. Oh, it's bad. It's just also really boring. The best parts of the Polly Shore dub are just in those clips that people have posted online. And also, I almost didn't even watch the Polly Shore dub because I found a European dub originally. This is still an F tier though. Apollo 10 and a half, a space age childhood. This is a Richard Linklater film. He did stuff like Waking Life and A Scanner Darkly. It has that rotoscoped look to it. The trailers of this film were kind of misleading though. You would think it would be mostly about this kid that gets asked to go on the test moon mission before the actual moon mission happens, but that's not really what this movie is about. That does happen, but this movie is mostly about the narrator talking about growing up during the 60s, and the suburban kid culture at the time. I watched it with my dad, and he liked it because he literally grew up in the 60s. He was born in 61. Eh, C tier. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This is the first one of those hybrid films I talked about. I like this film a lot more than the first movie. The first movie felt like it still had a lot of the animated character Ghost of the Real World tropes, despite the character redesign. Sonic 2, however, felt more like it was trying to lean a bit more into the aspects about what makes Sonic fun. It also mostly followed the animated characters throughout the movie, so that's always a plus. 
though there were some things that were a little off-putting to me towards the end with Sonic's human family. But it did make me excited for the third movie. B tier. The bad guys. What a way for DreamWorks to start the year. I really love the way that this feels very much like a crime comedy film. Like Mr. Wolf and Mr. Snake talking in the diner reminded me a lot of Pulp Fiction. It has excellent stylization and great dynamic action. Diane Foxington is also a really great character. This is also one of those films I watched multiple times in 2022. S tier. Bubble. This is an anime film on Netflix. It's very weird about a post-apocalyptic setting after a disaster happened with these bubbles that came out of nowhere to destroy things, and there's this bubble over Tokyo. There's this girl that appears out of nowhere from the bubbles, and she has like a Little Mermaid thing going on. At times, I felt like I didn't know what the hell this movie was trying to be, because at times it feels like sci-fi, fantasy, romance, and of all things, a sports anime? It just made me very confused. D tier. Marmaduke. This is such a weird looking movie. The character designs are so odd. Everyone has limbs that look like you could snap them like toothpicks. It's almost like they saw some of Illumination's character designs from Despicable Me and took all the wrong notes. But then the mom looks like this. There's also just a lot of bad physical comedy jokes and fart jokes. It's, it's just not good. F tier. Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. This was in development for a long time. My friend AC Racebest made a video about the announcement back in 2013, since he's a huge Rescue Rangers fan. Though this wasn't exactly what people were expecting at all. It tries to be a Roger Rabbit type world. But if you think too hard about it, the world just kind of falls apart. I still had a lot of fun with it though. The ugly Sonic cameo was fun, and I liked that it focused on the animated characters throughout the entire movie. I think the plotline would have been better if it was bonkers though. Bonkers is like literally the setting for this kind of thing. Still, I had a lot of fun with it. B tier. The Bob's Burgers movie. Thankfully, you don't need to be caught up with Bob's Burgers to watch this movie. Even if you're just somewhat familiar with the show, you can still watch this. Like, I hadn't watched the show in a long time, and I still really enjoyed this. All the songs are very fun, and the animation is great. Bob's Burgers has always had some great animation moments, and this movie has a lot of that. I know people were comparing it a lot to The Simpsons movie, where the story in this movie isn't quite as grand as something like The Simpsons movie. Still, I'll put this in A tier. Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness. This is like Zootopia plus Indiana Jones plus Angry Birds. It's from the same studio that did The Wildlife from a while back. The main character, Chicken Hare, has an evil uncle trying to take over the kingdom, and him and his two misfit friends have to try to stop him. It looks good, and I had a fun enough time with it, following this group of outcasts on this adventure. C tier. Mad God. This is Phil Tippett's uh, magnum opus, basically. He's a stop-motion artist who worked on Star Wars, Robocop, Jurassic Park, and this film has been like 30 years in the making or something. Though it's very gory and disgusting. It's like the definition of an acquired taste. It reminded me a lot of The Secret Adventures of Tom Thumb, if you've ever heard of that movie. A lot of the creatures in this movie reminded me of the creatures in that one. Watching this movie was almost like looking at a train wreck. You can't look away because of how weird and nasty it is. It really depends on who you are, whether you'll like this movie or not. Also, there's no real cohesive narrative to it. It's just kind of wandering this world and taking in the scenery. I know there's a lot of praise for this movie, but for me, it's a C tier. Lightyear. Definitely wasn't as good as Turning Red. It's weird when we have two films from Pixar in the same year, because usually one is way better than the other one released that year. It was kind of confusing about what this film was supposed to be. Like it's supposed to be the film that Andy watched in the 90s? It's already making me think of Toy Story, but the Buzz Lightyear in this movie is so different. They also retconned aspects of Zerg. It just feels kind of messy. I love the visuals though. Uh, C tier. Beavis and Butthead do the universe. This was pretty fun. I did watch Do America a long while ago, and this is a similar movie, but they go to the future in 2022. Having them interact with the modern time is very fun. Beavis and Butthead in general is an acquired taste, at least nowadays, so if you didn't grow up with it, you might not be into it as much. C tier. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. This is animated, but also not because it's filmed like a documentary with live action stuff. I did not know about Marcel, the shorts on YouTube. That just kind of missed me. But I did enjoy this movie. Not quite as much as other people were buzzing about it though, but it is very cute and creative. B tier. Pompo the Cinephile. This didn't get a wide release for the US until 2022. It's a movie about making movies. 
If you have any creative ambition in general, I'd highly recommend this movie. It has very fun characters, it's animated well, and it's just 90 minutes, which is like a whole thing in the movie itself. A tier. Minions The Rise of Gru. Now I have a whole thing with Minions, I don't really like them. I do like this better than the first Minions though. And it's funny that this was delayed from 2020 because they knew it would do well. They just couldn't release it in a year where they couldn't be in theaters. Also, the stuff with Gru was interesting, but they also kind of retconned stuff again. Uh, C tier? The Sea Beast. I really enjoyed this because I love giant marine life. You know what else I'd really enjoy? If you'd hit the like button on this video. Please? The way they showed off the sense of scale, especially early in the movie, and you see the red buster under the water, how it disappears, it's really cool. If you have Thalassophobia, which is the fear of the deep ocean, this would be a hard movie to watch because of those beginning scenes. It is kind of like a How to Train Your Dragon type of movie, but hey, that kind of movie can work, and it worked well here. It's also one of Netflix's best looking movies. It's S tier for me. The Deer King. It's about this disease that's affecting these two factions, or at least one faction and one isn't affected by it. It follows this one guy and this little girl he found that was orphaned. To be honest, I was not very invested in the story they were trying to tell here, and it didn't flow very well. It almost felt like it had too much going on and wasn't very cohesive. C tier. Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank. This was in development hell for a very long time. They changed the name from Blazing Samurai. Even a song in the beginning uses that name. It was called that because this is basically an animated Blazing Saddles. Mel Brooks is even in it, so I don't know why they didn't keep the Blazing Samurai title. I didn't hate it as much as other people. I thought there were some jokes that landed for me, but most didn't. C tier. DC League of Super Pets. This movie surprised me. I laughed more at this than I thought I would. Mainly because of that turtle. It's one of the best DC properties to come out this year. Well, not counting the Batman. It also has one of the best Justice Leagues they've shown in a theatrical film. I did like all of the pets in here, even with Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart as the two main leads. I liked it despite being tired of their dynamic. Also, if you gave me a nickel for every movie that had evil guinea pigs in 2022, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. B tier. Luck. This is Skydance Animation's first movie, and it released on Apple TV+. It feels like it's trying so hard to be a Pixar movie, but just not working. In my review of it, I compared it to Monsters, Inc., with how they wanted to build the world, but just doesn't feel well thought out. The animation is great, and it has some good character designs, but that's about all it has going for it. D tier. Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the movie. I binged through all of Rise of TMNT before watching this movie, and it is great. As far as animated action goes, it's very, very good, and very well paced. I was surprised with how well it flowed. You can still watch it without seeing the series, but I highly recommend you watch the series first, because it might be jarring with how different the turtles are from what you may be used to. Also, the Krang are very intimidating villains in this. Easy S tier. Drifting Home. It's about these kids that get stuck on this building. It magically ends up in the ocean or some kind of giant body of water. The kids are going through their problems throughout it and working them out. It looks very pretty, but there were better anime films in the year. C tier. Intergalactic. I was very confused about what this movie was going to be about when I first saw the teaser for it. Also, this originally was going to be a miniseries, but then they made it into a movie. It makes sense because this is separated into chapters. It's about relationships, basically. And I love that it's a movie for adults, but not too crude. It's very realistic. It has a very good soundtrack as well. I just think I had this expectation in my mind of it being something different other than a romance movie. B tier. Lyle Lyle Crocodile. This is another one of those movies where the main character is animated. Lyle is the crocodile who's animated, and also the cat is? I guess they didn't want to use a real cat for some of the things that happened to the cat. This movie feels so much like it's trying to be Paddington. It's more of a musical, Lyle communicates through singing, so there's a lot of singing. When I first saw the trailer for this, it almost seemed like it was a fake movie. It's also based on a book series, which I have never heard of. I've heard of Paddington, but not this. Also, Javier Bardem, it's funny seeing him in a role like this, since I mainly know him for No Country for Old Men and other villains. It's just very funny to me. But still, D tier. Wendell and Wild. This is Henry Selleck's stop motion movie for Netflix. Now I might make some enemies here. The stop motion is great, of course, and I like the ideas, but I was very disappointed with where the story went. It basically turned into a Save the Rec Center plot, which just felt generic. So for me, it's a C tier. Aqua Teen Forever Plantasm. This is also an acquired taste. 
if you didn't grow up with Aqua Teen, you might not like this at all. It's hard to gauge this one, since stretching out such a short show into something so long will be hard to do. I did enjoy some of the gags, though. Like, the best part of the first Aqua Teen movie was the let's all go to the lobby scene with Mastodon. This one doesn't really have anything like that, but it does have the Moon Knights interrupting the movie every so often. C tier. My Father's Dragon. This is the next Cartoon Saloon movie directed by Nora Toomey, who directed The Breadwinner. So it's not Tom Moore, so there's no Irish folklore here. It still has that Cartoon Saloon charm, though, so there's great 2D animation here. It's a fantastical journey with the main character and these talking animals. It's about learning how to deal with big problems as a kid and having empathy for others. A tier. Strange World. I might be a little biased here because I love speculative evolution stuff, like the future is wild and alien planet, which this film reminded me of a lot. It didn't do too well, unfortunately. And also, its story wasn't the strongest. It's a film about legacy and trying to do better than previous generations. Also, it has an actual, openly gay character this time, not just a one-off thing that's easily edited out for foreign markets. Unfortunately, it flopped in the box office, but I don't think it was because of the gay character. The concept of this film is unfortunately a bit too abstract for most audiences. And also, the advertising didn't really make it clear exactly what the movie was about. B tier. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Roderick Rules. I watched the live-action Diary of a Wimpy Kid in 2021 for the first time, and then the animated one came out, and it followed the same story, but worse. It's one of those rare times when the animated version of something is worse than the live-action version. And I'm not sure if this one is better or worse than the first one. The animation also isn't too great. It feels like it's trying to do a Peanuts movie thing with these films, but failing at it. D tier. Scrooge, A Christmas Carol. This is a musical that came out on Netflix, and it's yet another version of A Christmas Carol. I saw a lot of people thirsting over this version of Scrooge, which is pretty funny. It has some good songs and some very fun visuals, but overall, it's just okay. C tier. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Instant S tier. It's surprisingly lengthy for a stop motion film, and it's by far the best version of Pinocchio we got in 2022 compared to the others. It's darker, of course, and very compelling. It's the best stop motion film of the year, I think, and we got four in 2022. S tier. Night at the Museum, Ka Mun Ra Rises Again. It's weird to have yet another live action series turn into an animated film, and the animation wasn't that great. To be honest, I was not invested at all. It's not as offensively bad as Marmaduke, or as boring as Pinocchio A True Story, but still, who asked for this? D tier. Puss in Boots The Last Wish. Who would have guessed that a sequel to a Shrek spinoff would end up being so good? It opened with a very catchy song paired with an action sequence, and then the whole film is about facing the fear of death and mortality. It is very good, visually stunning, and also very funny. S tier. Alright, so here's my ranking after some inner tier positioning. Going from the worst to the best. Pinocchio, a true story. Marmaduke. Night at the Museum, Kamon Ra Rises Again. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Roderick Rules. The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild. Hotel Transylvania, Transformania. Bubble. Lyle Lyle Crocodile. Luck. The Deer King. Mad God. Riverdance, The Animated Adventure. Apollo Ten and a Half, A Space Age Childhood. Pause of Fury, The Legend of Hank. Minions, The Rise of Gru, Aqua Teen Forever, Plantasm, Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness, Scrooge, A Christmas Carol, Lightyear, Drifting Home, Beavis and Butthead, Do the Universe, Wendell and Wild, Chip and Dale, Rescue Rangers, DC League of Super Pets, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Intergalactic, Strange World, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, The House, The Bob's Burgers Movie, My Father's Dragon, Pompo the Cinephile, Rise of the TMNT the Movie, The Sea Beast, the Bad Guys, Turning Red, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, Bell, and then finally Puss in Boots The Last Wish. So that's my ranking for the animated films of 2022. What was your favorite animated film of 2022? And also remember, I did this tier list on my Twitch, which you can follow, and I want to do more like this in the future. And also remember to subscribe. I want to do more videos like this in the future. Perhaps I'll do previous years. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.